So in the last video I ran through an idea of a hierarchy of um, things that we can be sure of. Um, and getting towards the end of that, um, people in the past have settled on the idea that the self is the only thing we can ever be sure of, <clears throat> is the self. Uh, but I thought about that for a while and I thought, well, how can you have a self um, without a material world for the self to perceive? Um, it makes no sense the idea of a of a self existing by itself without a material world uh, from which to reflect itself off. An entity has to have something to perceive. A self existing on its own with nothing around is seems pointless. What's the point of existing? What's the point of, of being if there's nothing to be in? Um, so, in a way, the self and the material world go hand in hand, perhaps. You can't have one without the other. Um, a material world without the self what would be there to perceive this material world um, the self without a material world I can't imagine that a self without a material world would would, would have any idea uh, that it even existed without having something physical around it to reflect itself off I guess is the only way I can I can put it at the moment. So, what can we be sure of? <clears throat> well, I put it down to uh, personal experience. Personal experience, not in the common sense of the word at all. Uh, the experience. That, that I'm having right now in the present moment is really all that we can ever be sure of that I can be sure of to be more specific uh, and I say present moment because the past is an experience the past exists only in memory there's no proof <laughs> No one's ever proven that the past uh, is actually a thing. It's a memory. And that memory is an experience. Um, the future, also. A projection. And that projection is also an experience. Um, the self. I experience myself. Thus, the self is also just part of an experience. The material world, this all around, is obviously also just part of that experience. So I came to the idea of what if all of this I could uh, bundle up into what I guess you'd say a package deal of what's the best way to put it being aware of everything being aware of an entity that is all encompassing and that entity is experience that's probably the best way I can put it at the moment, but 
<coughs> everything can be wrapped up into experience. Everything. If you want to go as far back as possible, which which is what I've always wanted to do, um, which is what I've always wanted to do in my life, really, is get back to the very root of of it all, and. And this idea of 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 a of an all encompassing um, an all encompassing thing that can be appreciated as as one, and that thing is experience, my personal experience. Um, as I said, everything can be reduced to this experience, even the self. So I believe that this. This idea is as far back as anyone can go, as far back as, as anyone can, can reach getting to the bottom of everything. There's no further one can go than this experience. And um, I was thinking, how does this relate? How could this ever relate to the common person? I guess you'd say, um, or the average person that lives in this on this planet. <clears throat> a Christian, for instance, would have many objections to what I'm saying. Um, if you a Christian will say to you, oh, do you believe in God? Um, and I would say to a Christian, well, God is, God is the least, is part of what I would, what I would sum up as the least, most believable uh, entities that, that exist. I'm not saying that he doesn't exist. But I would put God and spirituality and spirits and everything um, at the bottom of the hierarchy of of uh, the bottom of the hierarchy of um, of credibility, of believability. <coughs> what I would probably say to a Christian is. Okay, so let's say that you die and you, sure enough, off you go to heaven and sure enough, there's Jesus and everything else is expected or planned out waiting for you. Then you go to heaven and um, I don't know how it works in heaven, but you know, you obviously, you've got a nice life there. Uh, life continues, obviously. <clears throat> In the presence of God and Jesus. Um, but I would say this to a Christian. That that is all still just an experience. If that did indeed happen. Uh, there's nothing to stop you in heaven sitting back and thinking, hmm. Is this actually happening? Is this actually real? Is this actually real? And there's nothing to stop anyone from continuing to philosophize and ask these deep questions in heaven. Why not? It would all, my point is that it would all just be part of one continuous thing. which I would call personal experience. Um, so what are the benefits of this understanding? First of all, I, I just wanted to say that I, I, don't, I don't believe that it's that what I'm coming up with or what I'm uh, concluding 
is any different to a lot of philosophies out there, a lot of Eastern philosophies at least, with the idea of uh, just being, being in the now, um, in a way, uh, that's where I've ended up, um, and I can see how difficult it, it is for anyone to appreciate this idea of being in the now, for instance, being in the now. It sounds so great, but, you know, in the end, how do, how, how do we be in the now, you know? Um, it's only now, after years and years of thinking and writing and philosophizing, that, that I have any kind of appreciation of, of what that means. If that is along the lines of, of where I have ended up mentally, philosophically, spiritually. <clears throat> But I believe it is. I believe that if anyone spends enough time thinking and wondering and philosophizing about things, in the end, you'll end up at the point of experience is the underlying entity, the experience, my personal experience. How, how is this a benefit? To people <laughs> can this make people happy I believe it can make people a bit a bit more satisfied and yes occasionally happy once again of course happiness is an experience and I've thought long and hard about um, emotion and everything else sadness and happiness and how people put so much emphasis on this and, and worry so much about this in their lives and and it, how it's so easy to get carried away with <clears throat> emotions, happiness, sadness. You can be terribly distraught and, 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 and for me, what I recently, what I do is I just, I, when I'm sad, I, I I think to myself, well, this is an experience. And I can't escape the fact that happiness is also an experience. And it really, uh, it really does undermine uh, a lot of things when you look at it that way. It, it really does change a lot of things. And I believe that, yes, it can make people wiser. I avoid the, the use of the word happiness because happiness is an experience as well. Wiseness is also an experience. But I believe it can be beneficial to people if indeed other people do exist. Um, and how how is that so? Well, jealousy, which is another experience, another experience of a human emotion. Um... When people think, think, think about all the, all the other people and their colleagues and what they're up to and how much money they're making and what, what holiday they might be on now and where they might be and the house they might be living in and everything else. That, all of that type of thinking gets, gets eradicated with this idea of, well... Is there any proof that that other person is even having that experience? Is there any proof that that other person even exists? No, there isn't. So therefore, the most important thing for anyone to worry about is themselves. Their own personal experience. There's no proof that anything exists beyond their own personal experience. And, and I think that that's... That takes away a lot of, a lot of worry, a lot of thinking, a lot of problems, a lot of imagining, and that people get up to thinking about other people and being jealous of other people, and jealousy just dissolves when you realise that this experience that that I'm having right now 
would well be, and probably is, all that ever existed. That's one benefit. Another benefit is that the fear of death can be dissolved uh, with this philosophy, with this frame of mind. The fear of death. Uh, it's a, it's a, a logical. It's 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 logic logic turning on itself. The fact that. <coughs> Mainstream materialist materialism, philosophical materialism, as which is a more specific way of putting it, the idea that that the only thing that exists out there is the material world, um, which is a which is a a bizarre when you look at it uh, rationally, is a bizarre way. To look at things, to wait a way to look at the world, and it's only come about um, recently. It's not. It's not a. It's not something that's been been with us for eons, and it will change. That's another important point. All of these ideals, science and Christianity, and they'll all change. The arrogance of science is unbelievable. The fact that we could believe that, this, that we've come across the final page in our understanding of the universe. is just beyond me how any rational person can't just turn a few pages of a history book and see uh, how quickly our, our understanding of the world can change. As different as science is to medieval Christianity is as different as science will be to the new mainstream all-encompassing ideal that will take over the world as materialism slowly is doing now materialism hasn't even hasn't even taken hold yet um, so that's how changing this whole understanding is. That's how crazy it is for scientists, materialists to believe, to be so arrogant to believe that their ideas are, that they've caught on to the, the idea that, that will end further pursuits of uh, trying to understand the world so as I was saying yeah materialism is the next best thing that people are latching on to and you'll see it on TV and you'll see it everywhere and it's a depressing philosophy it's a depressing way of looking at the world Christianity religion is also kind of depressing but materialism is even more depressing because the idea of uh, <clears throat> the idea of death being so final which is also a, a, a very new way of looking at things that when we die we've we've that's it. There's nothing else. It's, it's, uh, it's really is bizarre when you think about it, and it's very depressing, very worrying, and very scary. Oh my God! You know, when we're dead, we're dead. There's nothing more. It's just a scary thought. Um, sad, depressing, and and and. So. With this. With this understanding, with this philosophy that I'm talking about, of personal experience, coming from it, coming from this problem of death, from from this other angle, uh, you begin to see how how backwards the whole 
idea of philosophical materialism science actually is. It's almost like putting the cart before the horse. We experience this material world through something, with something, of something, from something. The self, who knows? Yet, somehow that's all ignored by science and the material world is put first to a scientist, to a philosophical materialist. The physical world is the basis of everything. The physical world is all that exists. Uh, they would say that a human is physical matter and nothing else. Not getting into the, the whole debate on consciousness and how it arises and even if it does arise in, in the first place. Uh, a scientific materialist would say that consciousness is an illusion, that the self is an illusion, so don't worry about that stuff, you know, that's just an illusion. Let's move on to the next topic. Um, it's all very bizarre. We experience this material world with our consciousness, with ourselves. So the idea that the material world outlives the self is just absurd because because of the fact that we experience the material world with the self. But for somehow, uh, in this day and age, we've turned it all around and said, well, okay, yeah, we experience the material world with ourselves, but let's just forget about the self and the consciousness. That's just an illusion. The material world is the thing uh, that will outlive the self. So, <clears throat> we've put the material world in front of ourselves for some reason. The self has been pushed down on this hierarchy of, of what can be believed, what can be sure about, what we can be sure of. For some reason, that's just how things are at the moment in, in, in our understanding, and that's depressing. But I believe it's counterintuitive, it's not logical, it's philosophically uh, irrational to, to say that the material world will outlive uh, the self. Um, because we experience the material world with the self. We are more sure of the self. We are more sure of the existence of the self than what we are of the material world. So why say that the material world, something that we're less sure of, will outlive the self? Something that we're more sure of. It's just absurd. Um, so yeah, I believe that that's another um, benefit of this philosophy. The fact that it tends to dissolve a fear of death. Uh, when you begin to look at things from this new understanding of one single entity being experience. Experience is everything. Personal experience. I'm not talking about collective experience. I'm not talking about somehow the experience of all people being put together and, and, and resulting in this manifested whatever we see. Now I'm talking about... I'm talking about you. Well, I'm actually talking about me. My personal experience. And yeah, that might be a little uh, self-centered, a, a self-centered type of philosophy, but in the end, um, it's just straight, it's just logical. It's straightforward, logical philosophy.